We're talking about the equation of a circle, and to do that, let's start out by talking about what a circle really is. Well, a circle is just the set of points that are a given distance from a central point. So in this circle down here, all of the points on the circle are a distance of two away from the center. See, no matter where I draw a segment from the center, you can see that the distance from the center of the circle to the circle is two. And that would be true whether I drew it diagonally or straight up and down or any other direction. All of these radiuses, all of these radii have a length of two. While we're here, let's just fill in these blanks. In this circle, points M and N are on the circle, and point O is the center of the circle. I'm also gonna add that my radius has a length of two. And I'm gonna write down that my center is located at two, three. You already know how to write the equation of a line. In fact, you know three different ways to do it. You also know a couple of different ways to write the equation of a parabola. Today we're talking about the equation of a circle, and here's the general form for the equation of a circle. From this equation, you can find the center of the circle. It'll be located at hk, and you can also see the radius because the radius will be equal to r. So from the equation, you can tell a lot about a circle. And here are some examples of lines, parabolas, and circles. Is my example of a line a function? Well, yes it is, it passes the vertical line test. Of course, it's possible to have a line that doesn't pass the vertical line test. For example, I could have drawn one like my blue line here, that would be x equals negative five, and that one would not be a function. However, y equals two x is a function. Um, let's look at the parabola, y equals one half x squared. It's a function, it passes the vertical line test. As long as my parabola is an up and down parabola, it will be a function. Now what about my circle? Is it possible to draw a circle that is a function? No, it's not. A circle is never gonna be a function. It will never pass the vertical line test. Um, so I could say no right here. A circle is not a function. So that's one way in which the equation of a circle is gonna be different than equations that we've looked at in the past. It represents a relationship that's not functional. So now that we know the equation of a circle, we can use that equation to check whether a given point is on a circle. Here's how. First, I'm gonna replace h and k in my equation with the center of the circle. The center of my circle is two, three, so I'm gonna have x minus two and y minus three. Next, I need to consider the radius of my circle. It looks like I have a radius of two, so I'm gonna replace r with two. Now I have the equation of this circle, and I can use this equation to see whether those points, m and n, are in fact on the circle. It looks like they are. Check it out. I'm gonna substitute the points two, five for x and y in my equation. Now I just need to see if this is true. Well, two minus two is zero, and five minus three is two, so I end up with zero plus two squared equals two squared. Yeah, that's true, because zero squared is just zero. Okay, now let's check point n. This time, I'll be substituting four, three into my equation for x and y. So I have four minus two squared plus three minus three squared equals two squared. Well, let's see, four minus two is two, and three minus three is zero. So once again, yes, this is true. And the equation of a circle is gonna hold true for any values of points on the circle that are substituted into it. I bet you could write the equations for the following circles. Let's give it a try. Start out by writing the equation of a circle, then erase your h and your k, and substitute these values of x and y, your center values um, for your ordered pair, into the formula. So x minus h will be x minus three, and y minus k will be y minus five. Now let's look at our radius. It says our radius ought to be four. So instead of writing r squared, I'm gonna write four squared. I could simplify this a little bit too. The only thing I did here is I rewrote four squared as 16, since four times four is 16. Why don't you pause the video and give the next three a try? Did you notice on this next one that we ended up with x plus two squared? That's because when you subtract a negative two, that's the same thing as adding two. So that's why we have x plus two squared in this equation. And of course, one squared is just one. Are you starting to get the hang of it? This time we had a negative five and a negative six, so we have x plus five squared plus y plus six squared equals 25. This one's pretty straightforward. We subtract four and we subtract seven. 
Then we just have to think, what happens when we square the square root of 10? Well, we get 10. So these are the equations of the circles given the center and the radius. Not so hard. So what if I'm given a graph? Well, my first step will be to find the center. So I'm gonna put a dot right here in the center of this circle for my first example. And then I'm gonna figure out what point that is. Let's see, that's negative one, zero. So now I know H and K. Next, I figure out the radius. And in this case, R is two. The distance from the center to the circle is two. Now I can write the equation. And I simplified my equation a little bit here. Instead of writing Y minus zero squared, I just wrote Y squared. Um, and instead of writing two squared, I wrote four. So this is the equation of my circle. Why don't you pause the video and try the next one? It'll be the exact same process. Did you find the center correctly? I did it by finding the point that was the same distance from the circle from all directions. And that was a distance of four. So this time my center is at zero, one, and my radius is four. So let's write our equation. We're gonna write x minus zero squared plus y minus one squared equals four squared. So that'll be x squared plus y minus one squared equals 16.